All right, welcome to Small Bike Stuff. This time, uh, we're gonna do something a bit different. One of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel is the Malaysia to Thailand video, which I did with Andrew. And uh, also another friend of ours, Thomas, who doesn't live in this city, so we'll catch up with him in later episodes of this series, which is gonna be all about the Malaysia to Thailand adventure. Uh, we really watched that video, and I guess it was cool, awesome trip. Really loved the video, but we didn't film it that well, did we? No, there was pieces missing. Yeah, massive pieces. And uh, we thought, okay, well, we'll go through all the raw edit of everything and watch it together and just kind of uh, talk about it a little bit. So it's going to be a longer video. Um, if you haven't watched the original Malaysia to Thailand video, go watch that right now. Right now. Um, this will make no sense otherwise. And if you did have more questions about that trip, hopefully we answer them here. And if not, ask in the comments and maybe we'll get back to you. Hey guys. Hey. Hey. Okay, we need to stop. Um, this isn't the, this. <laughs> this isn't the start of no, the trip. Yeah, this is a couple of d uh, a day in. Yeah, yeah. So long story short, we arrived in Kuala Lumpur. Um, our flight was two hours late from New Zealand. Our driver was waiting for us that we'd pre-booked because it was just so cheap for us to do that compared to just traipse around in taxis all day. And we uh, said to the driver, "Here's four or five shops. Take us to them." And um, we went through the first shop. It was cool. You, there was a bike there you liked, I think. There was a lot of bikes. Yeah. They, just would, they looked better than they were. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the ones that didn't look better than they were just like looked atrocious. Um, the speedometer is completely kind of glassed over from that plastic sun age kind of thing. Um, it was it was sh shit, really. Um, <laughs> the bikes that we wanted, we couldn't afford. Yeah. Uh, Andrew chose a wicked bike that had this massive, like, big front disc brake conversion. And um, what happened when he started it? Uh, the airbox wasn't there, and all the fuel came pouring out the front of the car. And <laughs> he, the guy thought it was normal. Yeah. He was trying to tell me it's fine. It's how they all are. Yeah. So we had a couple of bad experiences with a few shops, and then we ended up at this hole in the wall shop called Universal Motorcycle Trading. Do I have my number plate here? Hold on. Uh, it was somewhere. Yeah. So this is it, uh, Universal Motorcycles Trading Tell. No, that's the telephone number. Uh, this is my number plate on my bike that you'll be seeing throughout the whole video, uh, WGL3481. Wiggle. Wiggle. And these guys helped us out massively. A little hole in the wall, they had five bikes lined up in the front and I think we bought three of them. Uh, they had like about 15, 20 bikes, secondhand bikes for sale. And what they were doing was just purchasing, uh, let's watch some more and we'll talk about it soon. Nice. So you got to get it in the middle gap because there's oh, the top two boxes. things. Yeah, they were quite yeah. hard to use. And yeah, all the way. Yeah, that's it. And yes. I was like dictating to you how to use it, but I was being yes, oh, yeah. cocky. Nice. <laughs> the, top, the top boxes were the <laughs> best purchase, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They look a bit ugly, but it's good as everything yeah. was in there. So you can see at the moment that these bikes have knee baskets, baskets up around the knee, and they've also got baskets, uh, sorry, top boxes, um, under seat storage, not really a thing. Uh, the more modern, brand new Honda Waves and stuff, oh, listen to that power, have uh, a decent amount of under seat storage, but these things, like my bike was from 1998. How old was yours? 2008. Yeah, 10 years apart. Thomas was about the same, 2008. Oh, this is from your camera now. Oh, listen to that audio. It's crunchy. Yeah. Never before seen footage. I think this is an SJ cam. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part of motorcycle trips and stuff like that uh, that no one shows you. The start that you're just sitting there, uh, not really sure how the car parks work, getting in trouble from the security guards. Is he here now? Yeah, there yeah he is. he's talking to me because... We, yeah, there he, he is. He didn't want us to go through two at a time. Yeah. We had to go through separately. You just use your swipe card, go through, walk off, uh, get off, go give your swipe card to the previous person. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then go through individually. It was... Next time. He didn't want us to get hit by the barrier. I talked yeah. to him after. Oh, yeah. And same with this guy. Yeah. The same thing. One at a time. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, it's open. All right, so this is Malaysian traffic. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit for us. What, what was this, like 10 in the morning? Before that even? Yeah, so this is the day after we'd purchased our motorcycles. Thomas is on the back of my motorcycle now, which is what most of this chest mount footage is from. And uh, this is a GoPro Hero 5, I think. The footage was okay. 
audio was iffy. I had it set on low resolution for the first two days of filming. Um, I think I almost hit the bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were going to go pick up Thomas's bike. His wasn't ready yet. Ah, uh, I missed a gear. Yeah, just to get changed. Yeah. So Thomas is on the back of my bike, as, I've, as we've said, and because his feet were quite close to mine, I couldn't use the rear part of my shifter, and uh, I ended up just changing the wrong way two or three times on the way there. That's Andrew to the right of me at the moment. <laughs> and me <laughs> the not brakes breaking. not working. <laughs> no, no brakes. That's good. You can see we've gone to the front. That's just what you do in Asia when you're riding motorcycles. Oh, yeah. Talking about yeah. the headset bearings. Yeah. Could feel the wear yeah. in the middle. Yeah, and Andrew had never been to uh, a motorcycle repair shop at this point, so he was wondering how long is it going to take? You know, is it a rigmarole? Are we just not? Is it not worth doing? The street magic was like that from work. Yeah, he guy's got a guitar. He does. <laughs> He's got cool wheels too. Does. In Malaysia, everyone has alloy rims, aftermarket rims. Well, not everyone, but a lot of the bikes. Compared to Thailand, where it's not a super common thing. So this is a shop, motorcycle trading. Universal motorcycles trading. You can see it on the phone. <laughs> So they were selling um, brand new Modenas and Dalems. They did sell, they had old Suzuki logo in there from like 98 or 99, so they must have sold right, yeah. brand new, genuine brands had at one point. On, and then it would... Just the brand new bikes lined up behind us. Yeah. So those are the brand new ones. They're actually Hondas. That's a Honda oh, yeah. Dream EX5. There's my dodgy Mr. DIY phone mount, which worked really well for me. And we're using LS2 Vela helmets? Evo? Evo. Something like that. Streams. LS2 Streams. Evo Stream. Yeah, that's that bike from yesterday. Internal sun visor. Doesn't come down far enough. He's looking on now. So that bike on the left side there, let's pause that. That bike there, we are looking at a bike on the left hand side of the screen that looks brand new and, and in mint condition. This was being put together while we were there, so long story short, what they seem to do is get trade-ins and you can buy full new fairing kits, uh, you can buy everything for these bikes, new tail light pieces, new speedos at zero kilometers if you want to, uh, for any of the bikes. And they're genuine parts as well, a lot of them, and aftermarket. And this bike was being done up and we hadn't fully realized it then, but this is probably what our bike was like probably two weeks before we picked them up. Yeah. Uh, they would have been in pieces and they spray paint the bits they can access and see my rear sprocket was new But my front sprocket wasn't because he had to remove the side cover to check that so they just didn't yeah I remember finding pieces like we took the grips off the bars at one point and yeah. they just spray painted on top of them to yes. make it look nice and it did but yeah yeah um, at the end of the day after purchasing from here we kind of decided hey we'd much rather have bought from a place that it has at least put some effort into tidying them up than a place that's just traded them in and or at least know what to check yeah thoroughly not just assume that they have done these things yes yeah and absolutely and ask them if they can help us although it did lull us into a false sense of security because i didn't check the front sprocket either on my bike and that um as you'll find out later in the series proved to be a bit of an issue ongoing and yeah as andrew said up on the um we'll just skip forward to like two seconds for you can see suzuki gsx 110 on the left left uh vs 125 vino i think that is nah maybe but either or those are uh, old models, so this shop's existed for a long time and had a lot of spare parts up on the right there in those cabinets. Yeah. Just genuine parts. Yeah. And our bikes were sitting across the front here. Um, I think it was mine and Thomas's at the front and Andrew's was behind. This is the motorcycle shop, Universal Motorcycle Trading. RGV. Yeah. Thomas sitting down on the chair. Um, he's already paid all his money over. We're still friends with this guy on Facebook, his name's Lucas. He just got married. Congratulations, dude. He's getting his documentation. He couldn't get it the day before when we'd got ours, purely because I think his bike had to go through uh, like an MOT or Warren of Fitness. Yeah. Hello, good to see you. Yeah. This is the owner. Yeah, very good. Uh, in Malaysia, everyone speaks mm, like a little bit of English. Well, most of the people that we were dealing with did, but it was Malay English. And as you'll hear in a second, it's interlaced with a lot of local language as well as English and so it's super slang laden and you kind of just have to watch and pick up every third or fourth word and you get what's happening. Um, you can figure it out. Yeah, they can speak a lot more English than I can Malay, so I was stoked. Yeah. <laughs> it was way easier than Thailand or hey, other the, countries. They're showing them where the, 
the VIN number is and that it matches the frame number. Yeah. Uh, listen to this guy. It's the owner of the shop. Okay, here. Okay. Here. Okay. 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 You're, speak, you're speaking here. Okay, yeah. Okay. So speaking, I want to speak, you know, I want to do If I want to speak, you know, I want to Every now and then the sun interjects. Yeah. Look better in this. <laughs> yeah, he's chuffed. <laughs> he did his job. He's out. Foreigners have bikes, the foreigners are happy. Thomas is overwhelmed. You can see that yeah. look on his face. More keys. You get another set of keys. <laughs> So this is a 2004, I think it was, 2002. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. F100 is the engine. Okay. Mine sound a bit NF100 like is uh, the code for the engine on my bike, or yeah. the Honda Wave that Andrew, uh, sorry, Thomas had as well. Engine on mine. Man, I heard some bikes sounding much worse than mine do around <laughs> when you ride. So you might have just heard us talking about how our engine sounded bad. Um, this is 24 hours into ownership for Andrew and I, and I'd noticed that while having two people on the back of, or two people, two people on my bike, riding down the road, it was louder yeah. than, than it had been before. And I thought, ah, uh, I've been duped. But no, nah, it was sweet. When did we get the first oil change? Uh, first oil change was in the second day of ownership, mm. and it was already black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd got brand new oil put in at this dealership when we purchased it. Yeah, that was part of the deal. Yeah. Top box and oil and a lock for the disc. Yeah. I just ditched you. <laughs> nice color. <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> so many days. <laughs> Thomas doesn't know what's happening. I haven't seen this full version. Yeah, so look, he's putting the rack on for the knee basket a local's just leaving who's had some work done there's our two bikes the honda this is the honda wave 100 on the right and uh from 1998 and on the left what was it 2008 yamaha legenda i really wanted a um a two-stroke yamaha 125 zx or zr 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 yeah it's a six-speed manual but they don't make them anymore obviously and everyone in malaysia and southeast asia they want them because it's the bike they're fast they sound good uh, I didn't realize how expensive they were, so that couldn't happen. So then I found the, the newer four-stroke version called the 135 LC. <laughs> yeah, um, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I think it's a five-speed manual, uh, 135cc, which is like the biggest you can kind of get of that style. Uh, horizontal engine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the next choice of bike for, for the boy races. And you weren't determined to get one of those, like... Yeah. And while we, while we were there, like the day before when we were stalking for bikes, Andrew was not going to get anything else apart from one of these. And I think that bike we mentioned earlier that had the carb falling off. Or that whatever, was one of those bigger yeah, ones. Yeah, it was a 135. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was either a complete terrible bike for too much money or something really nice for more money than I had. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, set it on the 110. It was a good bike. Yeah. They actually bought out a 115 oh. after the 110 as well. Oh yeah, so this, so it's quite old <laughs> compared to what was available then. Although I did have the oldest bike in the whole trip, yeah. and yeah, this is outside the shop. Good la. Yeah, good la. La thank is you. a thing they just say on the end of a lot of their sentences in Malaysia. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you uh. We'll talk to you okay. again. Okay. Thank Our you. thanks and goodbyes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Just before, okay. just before then, they had said to us, oh, so, "These um, we don't recommend riding to Thailand or that far." If you do go 40, 50 kilometers now, I just got hit by a Mercedes almost. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they said, a lot of people we talked to, they said, you can't do that. Or yeah. You go slowly. This is locals saying that, not, not foreigners. Yeah. So here, lane splitting is king. You've just got to find your way and stick it out and make sure it works for you because if it doesn't you're getting squashed you have to flow with the traffic if you are hesitant if you slow down too much someone's yeah. going to run into you best one you see that yeah i think that's where we had lunch yeah the best one yeah <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to go here and yes. they said no it's bad yeah yeah it's that yellow building across the street on the left hand side that you can see we were here at the shop so long that we wanted lunch and they said no don't go there yeah just don't and this is a local shop, so yeah. It's like four or five shops along here. 
Yeah, there was. There's four or five bike shops. Um, this one had a workshop and the parts area, so that's... Um, so we're looking at the shop now, and on the left-hand side you can see all the parts. Up the top you can see a sign saying Inky. Um, it says RM150, so that's about 53, 54 New Zealand dollars, and that's for a pair of 17-inch wheels. Yeah. Uh, like 1.2 or 1.4 uh, inches wide, front and rear. And those are just on the shelf. You had to have the specific bike they had them in stock for. Yeah, I tried to buy a set. Um, and they looked at my bike and told me no, even though I didn't want it for that bike. I wanted it for the bike back home. Yeah, super big struggle. Mm. Um, I had previously been to Malaysia and been to this exact same shop, and that's why we chose this shop this time. But the first time I went there, I was trying to buy a pair of wheels, and they just said, what for, what for? And I had a bike in New Zealand. doesn't matter what it was. It wasn't one of these that they had there, and uh, it took me about 15 minutes of convincing to, yeah. to let them sell them to me because they thought they were going to do me a disservice and I'd come back and complain. Probably, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we spent some time here sorting out our bikes and uh, the workshop part that you see from here on in is the other half of this uh, shop. I'd also like to note that this is a footpath and there's people riding their bikes on it. Yeah. <clears throat> this is Andrew's bike. This is your yeah, bike. This is the Yamaha. Getting the headset bearings changed. Yeah. I think he's taken them off. Yeah, he's taken the um, forks out because yeah. they did fork. That's right. Oil changes. Yeah. That's the owner on the left side there, and this is the worker uh, in the middle. And the worker in the middle spoke quite a lot of English, and the owner on the left was Chinese, Malay, so he didn't speak the same ethnic language, I guess, as the uh, mechanic. Um, but they obviously spoke Malay to each other as well. Mm. But all I'm getting at is that um, there was different levels of English, and um, we just kind of dealt with whoever would speak the best. He was making notes the whole time, you see his notepad, about yeah. what work he was doing to charge us. Yeah. yeah. Look, it is no front forks. But look at my it's tire. about 35 degrees Celsius, dope. by the way. Oh, I have to wheelie from now on. <laughs> I'm not getting any. Um, they just took the Your whole well. top of yeah, Andrew's they bike did off mine. in one go. My rear wheel's on, but my front wheel's like not on they just undid a few of the things and smacked yeah, the back it. Are, the back really the back oh, it took us ages to figure out what he was saying, but he's just saying service only, the brake pads are fine. And it took us this yeah. long to understand that watch. Yeah. Uh, new brake oil. Yeah. Do you want to service? <laughs> just, he keeps speaking to you until you understand what he's saying. He does not want At to this change, point, just I'd understood. I didn't know if Andrew had, so I offered to pay for it because I thought price how might much, have been. How much for service? How much for service? I'll shout you. I'll, sh I'll shout your oil. I think every time they take them apart, they just want to. Every time they take. Yeah. They just want to do it. This is us just trying to justify what they're doing without actually knowing what they're doing. Yeah, sure. Oh, I can't remember the name. It's like I something. Oh yeah, YL. 9pm. See there's four bikes in the shop being worked on at once. Yeah, YL, that's what I've been doing. Okay, one go, one go. Oh. See your pistons? Oh, one piston was yeah. out a lot further than the other. Nice finger. Very good. This one can use back. You can use. Brand new can use this one. Okay. Uh, Fix this one. Service only. Service please, yes. Okay. No, he's got a point. Both pistons aren't coming out. Is it okay? I like that. You've got one bearing that's stuffed, so we'll change the single yeah. bearing. It's okay, I understand. What? It was yucky. Yeah. Was it actually like crunchy? Oh, uh, yeah. This one element, this one element, this one element, put oil. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what element means. I think it's like, I will. And, uh, you thought it was a, like a, a doing phrase. It yeah. definitely it meant a part. Like the element of it? Yeah. It change element. this one element change. He was saying element change, element change. Uh, I think it just meant yeah. item. Yeah. Yeah. He He's using the like side out. of his T wrench. Not the end where you put the socket the on. The handle, yeah. Yeah. He's like proving it. Yeah. yeah. You want me to put a this one you can use, yeah. So you can <laughs> use the crush tube. It, just throw it in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is Asia where they've still got young kids that want to 
earn money and try in life, so they probably come and clean the shop afterwards. Yeah. So they just throw stuff into the corner, back there. <laughs> just chucked my wheel. <laughs> So yeah, this is a motorcycle shop in Malaysia, and this is in Kuala Lumpur, so it's probably a bit upmarket compared to um, some of the other ones in the provinces. I think it's just like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and? It's like, why are you watching me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight into the hand. I remember that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's showing us the fluid. Well, I have to change it, it looks now. like meat sauce. Yeah. The colour! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he took it in the back and poured it back in it. <laughs> the box for your rims down there? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Where's Thomas? He was looking at the wheels next door. Ah, uh, okay. Because he didn't want to get them. Yeah, Thomas didn't want to get wheels because he didn't want to spend more money. And then we both had alloy rims but he didn't so he got them at the end after we decided to leave yeah. and we had to wait another half an hour 45 minutes well i was, was lucky they did the work so quickly yeah Do you want to get the screws, sorted out? screws uh meant your um rear shock mounts the lower shock mounts oh. they were moving yeah no you said i said screws i definitely said screws might have been about the tail light i think the tail light was loose oh okay i don't know yeah. Work's done now. Yeah, so everything's done. Test ride, give me some oil. He already had these rims, by the way. Yeah. So all he's doing is test riding his front end. That's the um, Skytrain. There's a Skytrain system all throughout the city that we kind of didn't really figure out in our small time there, but that was there. And there he is. He almost hits a bus. The bass. Yeah. Right. Malaysian word for bus is bass. Yeah. B A S. No one got off, I didn't realise. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thomas's bike isn't outside. Ah, uh, see, here we go. Thomas on the front has a uh, spoked room, his rear spoked room's on the ground. You know what he's doing there? He's working out on his phone how much it's costing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was his other concern. Yeah. And mine's done now, so I'm going to test ride it. And they're just like, your bike's done, and then walk away and start working on another one. And so you just have to get it out of the shop. And, yeah, I did. Here's me riding it out. And that was it. We've left the shop now. Mm. We had some food while we were there. Yep. Yeah. It was a great place. We had food on a restaurant just on the left side here. Um, Malaysia's awesome. Kuala Lumpur's awesome. Um, go. Go to Kuala Lumpur. Whose bike is this? This is mine, but the camera's on the front. I'll probably edit some of this out. Yeah. It so, rained for 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but all of the rain. Yeah, and the whole trip we only had rain for 10 minutes, which is great. And so this is us with our 10 minute rain shower. Uh, heading back to somewhere in the city, possibly the accommodation, possibly a shopping mall. I think we went to the shopping mall after this. You can already see it's sunny in the distance. Yeah. The Skytrain stations above us. Yeah, so Kuala Lumpur is super modern. If you've got any thoughts of it being like a third world country, just take those thoughts and throw them in the rubbish bin. Yeah. And it couldn't be further from the truth. It we was more modern than New Zealand's most oh, yeah. modern upmarket city. We drove through maybe one average looking area, but yeah. everything was nice. Yeah. And the locals are much more proficient with their lane splitting and would just zoom up. And if they get impatient, they'd like go around another car to get past you. Mm. So you really had to be decisive about where you're going and why. All the uh, um, Malaysia, Malaysian ad advertisements are quite interesting because you can kind of understand what they're saying. Um, their language is written in English characters, so. Some very cool cars. Petronas. Uh, no, that's not a Petronas. What's it? A uh, Ferrodua. What is the Mitsubishi called? Uh, Mitsubishi's a Protons. Protons. Yeah. And this is our accommodation, which was literally a four and a half minute walk from the Petronas Towers. Uh, and everyone would just park on the sidewalk, and so we just copied them. Yeah. A lot of these guys are delivery men, dropping off food and things like that to some of the apartments up here. 
and we just stayed in an Airbnb and it was easy as. <laughs> Wearing shorts, big deal. Yep. It's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> Uh, this is riding out to Batu Caves. Batu Caves, yeah, nice one. Thanks. That was probably 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. And on main highways as well, which for me was a bit weird because in Thailand, where I've lived before, uh, motorcycles of any size are not allowed on the actual tolled or proper highways. In Malaysia, you're fully encouraged, you just stay on the left hand side, and when you come to the toll booths, they've got these little go kart tracks that you can see in Ed March's Malaysia to UK video if you watch that go buy it from Dirt Punk or something yeah I don't know look at that that's crazy it's a cell phone tower can disguise as a tree yeah that's cool <laughs> we didn't really know where to go at any point and yeah you're super was, conscious of like, there was people lining up to pay so we just wrote Past. Yeah, you're conscious of being offensive to the local culture or religion, or you don't want to just ride a motorcycle right through the middle of a temple accidentally. We saw some locals do it, so we just followed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I said. Yes. <laughs> you're a bit miffed at me, and I don't blame you because. Yeah, well, I keep looking back every now and then. Anyway. Okay, I've just stopped it for a second. I'm explaining to Andrew what's happening because every time we left to go on a ride, I was super strict and I'd be like, okay, we're gonna ride like this, we're gonna be like this. I was just worried, I planned so far ahead, I didn't want anything bad to happen. And the second we got on the road, I did the exact opposite of whatever I'd just said. Rode way ahead of everyone, lost them, and then we'd get to the destination and they'd just be looking at me, shaking their heads, just like, this is exactly what you said don't do, so, yeah. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. Like, looking back now, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. It's just funny at the time. 20 minutes, 30 seconds. So annoying to follow. Yes. Hey! Yeah. No, not local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, motorcycle holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ride uh, Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Thailand. Yeah. yeah. Telling us where he stays. Yeah, he stays uh, okay. here. He's been there for how many years? Yes. Wow. 40 years. Yeah, thank you. He been here for 40 years. So this trip was all about just testing our motorcycles, seeing if we could use our top boxes as they were designed for. How did things sit? How did it feel? Who are the fastest? Who are the slowest bike? And um, basically, how was it going to be the next day when we jumped up uh, at whatever in the morning and went riding and this trip which is really close to the city if you go to Kuala Lumpur go to Batu Caves it's so close yeah. uh, it's well worth it you can get to train from the center of the city or buy a motorcycle and ride there it's the only two options so Andrew and Thomas halfway up the stairs yo dudes it's a lot of stairs it was really hot And that's it. So this is the next day. You don't get to see so, the actual caves. No, you don't get to see the caves. Um, those are the Petronas Towers. That's basically the end of Malaysia. Uh, we'll let it play out here. And yeah, we just left that morning, woke up, went to Petronas Towers and got a picture of our bike underneath them and then rode off. Uh, we had the phone set to uh, Penang on the maps. Uh, it was supposedly about a seven to eight hour ride. Uh, we rode gosh what was it probably a 150 kilometers uh, you'll see I had an issue and we'll, we'll cover that in the next video but uh, long story short if you're gonna use Google Maps when you're traveling just check what settings you've got your maps yeah have a look at the signs to look at the route that it's sending you before you yeah it. yeah we rode completely off direction for the first few while which is cool because we got to see this real next cool piece of road that was a massive bridge connecting um, basically ground level with a mountain top and Amazing sights, but yeah, we were, we were way off the main highway. Um, a couple of things people have asked us is how we got there. Uh, we flew. We're from New Zealand. Uh, we went with Malaysia Airlines. Yeah. And the flight was delayed two hours, and we landed there, and Malaysia Air 
Airport. They've got a couple of them, Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur International Airport. They're really easy to get around. Uh, there's taxis there. The train's really easy to get into the centre of the city. Uh, your taxi's probably about 40 or 50 New Zealand dollars, maybe maximum, to get into the city. I think we spent $80 New Zealand for a whole day, taxi hire, and only ended up using it for like six hours. Yeah, that's right. And the guy was great. He spoke a little bit of English and would help us out. Um, tons of places you can sort that out. Just have a Google. Um, why this route? Purely because uh, I've been wanting to do a bike trip for a long time. I've been bugging these guys to come with me for a long time, and we were just going to do the whole Top Gear, Ed March spec, Vietnam, south to north, north to south. Almost got cut off. Uh, but decided, hey, why don't we just do something else Ed March has done? Yeah. <laughs> and um, do the first part of his Malaysia to UK trip. And I used to live in Thailand. I speak a little bit of the language. We're going to spend a majority of the time in Thailand, a little bit in Malaysia, which has Malay English. So I thought these are two cool countries where we can get around without too much language trouble. And here we are on the highways starting now. And yeah, we did it and it worked. Uh, a year of research went into this trip. You what? went to Kuala Lumpur briefly. Yes, I had. I'd gone there previously uh, about eight months before we went there on this trip and realized I remember that when you were there, you said like, this is cool yeah like this is really nice and modern and you could ride bikes here after living in thailand i felt like oh gosh it was the best place ever and then i went to kuala lumpur and i was like okay there's other cool places too yeah um and so that that's what that was about um why those bikes and would i recommend buying bikes to be honest no uh if you're doing a big circle and could go back into malaysia and uh can rent motorcycles then do it 100 percent. buying motorcycles uh, you really have to be somewhat mechanical uh, I was fixing mine on the side of the road in the first three hours of riding. So was Thomas, and Re Drew was within eight hours. Required a lot of patience, not with just a mechanical, but yeah. to actually get it in your name was probably half a day of waiting in line yeah. to get them registered and, and paying. For sure, you don't see the yeah. back and forth between the bike shop. Well, the bike shop was great. They took they us and helped us, us lot, re yeah. Yeah, register them. Uh, and as a foreigner, you can register a motorcycle in your name over there, but... Once again, um, if you can do a rental option, um, it depends if you're crossing the border or not with the legalities, but renting would 100% be easier. Uh, renting is the way to go if you can do it. This was really high up, you just have to believe us. Yeah. <laughs> um, you might see it here. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go, yeah. You're on the left side. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why those bikes? I wanted a Honda 100cc bike because the engine was the same bolt pattern for a lot of bikes I have back here in New Zealand. That was the only reason. Uh, realistically, I would recommend doing this on a 125 minimum Yeah. in future. Uh, a 100 and a 125, I only probably have 10k an hour difference in top speed, but cruising at 76 kilometers per hour for 2,500 k's is punishing. Uh, eight hour days, it was, yeah, going 85, 90 would have made a massive difference. You know, we could have got to destinations and enjoyed them a lot more. Uh, Accommodation Kuala Lumpur, we literally just booked, and it's over. Um, Kuala, Lu Kuala Lumpur accommodation, we just booked an Airbnb. There's tons about. Um, I made sure I had a garage. Uh, when Ed March, yeah, when yeah, that was it, parking. When Ed March went over, he hooked up with uh, a motorcycle forum and found a local to stay with. Yeah. Uh, there's just don't be scared, and something can happen. You'll figure it out. Um, and the language barrier isn't a problem at all. So yeah, Kuala Lumpur is awesome. Uh, in the next episode, we go to. Penang? Same day. Thanks for watching. This has been Kuala Lumpur uh, of our Kuala Lumpur to Thailand, Malaysia to Thailand trip, Kuala Lumpur to Bangkok trip. And yeah, um, this is really long. If you've watched the whole thing, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, you could just as easily have this on in the background and not watch it probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to us talking. So yeah, thanks so much. Uh, Andrew will be here for all of the series and hopefully we can get Thomas in on a few of them, even if it's through video call. Yeah. Oh, and just to finish off the video, this is the original map. Uh, at this point, we were still planning on stopping in an island in Thailand that never happened. Um, here's our total trip length, which is meant to be 2,247 kilometers. Uh, on the back, um, I was just plan, yeah. yeah saying what I was going to do. I'm going to guide these guys. I'm going to go get a tattoo. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go get our bikes. We're going to do this. Um, yeah, Thomas goes home on this day and pricing up parts yeah so that was it it all started from a, a google map you can do it too but if you want to do it better do it with me small bike stuff thanks andrew bye